Well, a guy's on a mountain in southwest Colorado where I bought this 1950 Chevrolet sight unseen. Of course, it doesn't run and it's been off the road for 20 years. I've got some cheap tools, handful of parts. I'm gonna see if I can get this fired up and drive it 1,400 miles back home. Yeah, this is probably the, this is the camel that steps on the straw's leg or whatever. This is probably that one. Okay. Well, the guy's been in negotiations with this car for a very, very long time. So I want to start by saying thank you to Kevin and family for storing it up here on whatever mountain top we're on. The air is thin. Like most old cars, this one too, unfortunately, has a tragic story where previous owner unexpectedly passed away. That was about 20 years ago. And I'm told he was a very fun, loving, happy-go-lucky kind of guy. And that's gonna be our goal is carry the torch and have as much fun as possible getting this thing running. And then of course the adventure back home through multiple states. Haven't really looked at it that close, to be honest. We're gonna do the usual. Let's just walk around this thing. We gotta figure out what's going on with this, what the engine and transmission is, the rear end, what kind of shape it's in. Try to devise some sort of pl pl plan. I don't know, I'm told they're useful. But end of day, we gotta have this thing running. Obviously brakes are gonna be a big concern because this is the first. Immediately leaving this property, I've got a mountain pass to go down. And no, it's not a nice four lane highway with guardrails and lights and whatnot. It's a single lane gravel road winding through trees with drop offs and just certain death every angle you look. So I normally say brakes are last, they might be like second this time, which that feels weird even saying that. With the guy's insane travel schedule, it's nearly impossible for me to stick to a strict diet. But thanks to AG1, I can keep my daily foundational nutrition in check without taking a bunch of different pills, gummies, or powders. Just one scoop or one packet of AG1 gives me 75 essential vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients. AG1's approach is published in peer-reviewed scientific journals and has been tested for 950 plus contaminants and NSF certified for sport. So you guys know personally, I've been using AG1 for a while now and it's hard to explain, but overall, I just feel much more healthy and it's led me to making healthier diet choices as well. AG1 has many, many benefits. For, for example, if you're experiencing a lack of energy, AG1 can give you sustained energy throughout the day without that annoying crash you get from caffeinated drinks or drinks with a bunch of sugar in them. Another quick example would be, how do you know you're even choosing the right supplements? It could be absolutely overwhelming trying to figure that out. With just one scoop of AG1, to have your daily foundational nutrition covered. I don't know why, but I've gotten used to using this funnel. One little scoop, boom. A little shake, not much. It honestly doesn't taste that bad. And in fact, I actually crave this in the mornings now. Go over to drinkag1.com forward slash vice grip to get started on your order. AG1 is gonna give my community free one year supply of AG D3 and K2 and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to this 50 Chevy. Truth went on ahead and be told, the 50 Chevy is one of my favorites and it's an absolute iconic vehicle. And this I believe would be a style line, it kind of has the stubby cab and the more elongated trunk where the fleet line was more fleetish. It was kind of longer, longer window, but either and or, they both just had that absolute iconic 50s styling with these big old hips in the back, the accentuated front fenders, that pointed hood. I just think they're really, really classy cars and I'm excited to own this one, honestly. And the fact that we're driving it two thirds across the US of A, phew, even better. Guy likes to start in the trunk. Tells you an awful lot about the rig. I don't like to open the hood first. Let's see what kind of engine parts we're missing. Hmm, 
We've got some bondage and removage back here. It just flips open. There's a lot going on. <clears throat> There's a lot going on in here. Let's just bring you in. Ooh, battery. Remind me not to fall off this edge. It's uh, about a 20 foot drop into a Datsun. So let's go ahead and not do that. Over here we can see the Colorado plate in 04 last year. That's when it was parked. Looks like spring of 2004, but man, do we got stuff in here. We got jackalators, multiple flavors. Boy, the mice or rats, one of the two really been in here. Some rubbing compound, probably good. Some tape, that's a front pocket find. I don't think I've ever seen a champion battery before. Bath towel, who doesn't need one of them? Another jack, a couple tires. Trim pieces, bumperettes, another plate. I don't know which one is correct, I guess. Extra wheel in there. If that wheel is the right bolt pattern, we might go ahead and have this mounted on that just so we have a spare. Some pulleys and doodabs and belts and whatnots. Some sort of brass fixture. I don't know what's under this. Ace hardware bag. That's kind of neat. Let me. That's an oldie. That's pretty much the contents of here. Another hubcap up in there. I don't see any engine parts. This is a good sign thus far. Well, we dug through the trunk. No bodies, no engine parts. So far, things are looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and walk around the exterior of the vehicle and at first glance I have to tell you this is actually really solid looking for a 50. These typically have some rust down in the bottom quarters, front of the fender flares, stuff like that. I do see some bondo and dents but it doesn't look that bad. Then we'll dig through the interior, see what we got going on there. And then lastly, because we're procrastinating of course, we'll open the hood and see what the likelihood is we're going to make it. 1400 miles home So this is a good sign right away normally these get clobbered in and just completely full of bondo But that's the original body line So that's pretty nice I Do see some heavy heavy bondo down here, however And whatever kind of creature nest that is and now we got a clobber probably went off the Road coming up here. Maybe I don't know Little bit of rust right there. We're just gonna call that weight reduction pretend we didn't see it Doors look great. Look at that fresh metal. I might have to primer that now. It definitely has had a repaint with the amount of, like this bondo right here was completely unnecessary. But it's been painted at some point. Fender looks beautiful. Really, really nice. Pretty unique wheels on this thing. What have we got? 225, 75 14s. Bumper seems to be in pretty good shape. We have the bumperettes and all that stuff in the trunk. This can be cleaned up easily. A little bit of a clobber here, but SOS could clean this up too. Some more unnecessary Bondo. But solid, nonetheless. This side has really been worked over. She was maybe getting ready for another repaint. I don't know but not a lick of weight reduction on this side whatsoever. Beautiful. Telltale sign of some bondo there. Got some cracking, same here. Gonna have some heavy bondo there, but still good shape. Deck lid, it's looking good. Interesting color pattern with the in-between paint job, faded original, faded second paint job, kind of looking deal. Not seeing any major body damage on the roof. Glass is in great shape. Really, really good shape. Other than, you know, the drinker's side, 
I think we got some glass down. Yep. But we can roll this down and then pretend we didn't see that. You know what I mean? Got a little bit of a lazy spring there, but body's in good shape. I am uh, impressed and happy with the body on this particular 50. It's looking pretty good. Well, it's probably needless to say, but the tires are down on wind. I did ship a handful of parts ahead of me and four tires because these are, these are just, they're not gonna work, you know what I mean? Okay, time to get in this bad boy. Let's see what we got. It's full of flies and mice. It smells like a dusty saddle blanket, seat cover rolled in brown gravy and rosemary. It's not bad, actually. We've had some pin striping, some customage, gauge relators, headliners in pretty good shape. I don't know. Come look at this. At one point in time, this was all giddied up. I mean, we got pin stripage. Door card was redone. Check out this custom seat. Where's that cover? You got original edge with the custom bear seat cover with the secondary custom bear. No, that's not bear, that's ostrich or something. There's another seat cover on the seat cover. We got, uh, this is the sun visor. Didn't get very far, little feller. We got a peace sign inside the gauge. It's inside. Switches galore. Uh, it's a hot rod because you got gauges planted in every direction. The stick shift was a bolt action on the tree. Looks like they moved it down on the floor there. Cool shift knob. That's pretty neat. Radio deletion. I'm not quite sure what kind of Grateful Dead that thing is. Huh. Okay. Headliner's in pretty decent shape. Sagging a little right there. This is unique. I've seen this before for pets. To haul dogs and stuff like that, but we got a sleeping bag and a pillow. So maybe that feller was camping back here. And he liked Miller. Genuine draft. There's the radio, I think. Yep. Oh, an XR4400 cassette player. Oh, it's not in there. Hmm. Okay. The mice droppings are thick in this one. Really, really thick. I can feel the hantavirus entering my body. Okay, here we go. Let's just get into it. Wow. You really gotta get after the clutch. Nothing. I never got brakes. The great news is the brake master cylinder is under the floor, hooked to the frame, extremely hard to access and work on, and all of the other parts and pieces are almost impossible to find on the entire brake system. Two ice scrapers, paper towel roll, miscellaneous hardware, used fuel pump, couple belts, hairbrush, four sparkulators, a mirror, and a chunk of a grill. This is the inventory in the inside. And we got some bonus stuff, like a 12 by 1 board. You never know. Could come in handy. Got no brakes. Clutch is hard to push. It's been fan-dangled, and the wiring is doing this. So I think I might have owned this maybe back in the 90s? I'm not sure. Anyway, let's go ahead and open the hood. See what we got. Here's the deal. I was told there's a V8 under here. And that would completely 
help me forget about the brake situation, if that were to be the case. And I saw a photograph, I know it's here. Yes, whoa, we're missing part of the hinge or something. That yap really opens up on this thing. Look at that. We got v 8 old school valve covers. Aftermarket intakes, Edel broken. We got chrome to get us home for days. Super tiny fan so it overheats. Points. I'll take it. This is pretty good. Come and look at this. Old school Harrison Rad. I'm going to say this is a repop or been rebuilt. Otherwise, this is in extremely good condition. It's one of the first things my eyes latched on to, you know. And then, of course, v 8 age. This normally would have a six banger in her but no she's been v8 swapped that's pretty sweet uh, we'll figure out here in a second if i get back there it's probably an early 70s you know truck block or car block really cool valve covers the mice or rats have been well this is the this is the truck stop bathroom for the mice basically so that's pretty neat. I'm not sure what this is. This is how you're supposed to run it. There's a mechanical pump on it. Oh, see, I did, I did work on this. We got two red wires. If you can't own it, no one else can either. You just, they just burn it to the ground, right? What is this? What's that go to? I don't know. We got a short water pump. That's kind of unique. That's more of a Corvette kind of style pump than anything, but it looks like they had to do that to make this tiny little fan fit. Edel broken. Looks to be a Manuel choke. And then we got points on this. Yep. Wires twisted together, whatnot. This is going to be. Oh, it is a copper line. I thought that was going to be plastic that would break and spray oil everywhere. I think we could squeeze a few more miles out of this air cleaner. Here's another easy indication it's been painted. And there we can see it's a 50. I just can't get over this stainless and the glass in this thing. It's just beautiful. So anyway, here's our power plant. Small block Chevrolet, little tight in there. I think we might be able to make this work, hopefully. So as we typically do, we gotta start with just seeing if this thing actually even rotates, right? And then spark fuel compression. So let me pop it in neutral and hope it doesn't roll off the shop. Yeah, we're on the roof of the shop below. I don't know, I think that's neutral. This shifter kinda just does this. Let's see what the oil says. It's got oil. Oh boy. Wow. That's 32.67% uh, gasoline. But no water or antifreeze. That's good. Hello. That is completely empty. So Freeze plug has been pushed out and leaked everywhere probably. We'll have to pull the motor to get to that. <clears throat> That's fine. Seems normal. Okay, so instead of trying to get a ranch dressing down here on the pulley, I'm going to try to use the fan blade and the belt to get this thing to spin. You can come in closer if you want and you can watch it. Yeah. All right, pressure. I'm gonna push. So if I pull, I'll cut my hand. <sighs> Slipping. <sighs> Slipping. Okay, so like I said earlier, we're gonna get a wrench on this because the belt's gonna slip because the engine's really tight. Okay. I'm back with plan A. You know, that we skipped over. 
gonna try to put a wrench on this. You know, I'm just sitting here thinking, this car is probably under snow three months of the year. So, has it been exposed to moisture? Absolutely. Can I get, I need a shorter socket. Here I am, shorter socket. Okay. It's turning. It is really tight though. Hmm. Well, it rotates. It's not the best feeling rotation, but it's doing the thing. So I think, well, we're just going to say the engine is good. <laughs> okay. As I usually do, guys got obligations immediately this weekend. So we're going to have to expedite this one. Just doing the quick math, I need to run 450 to 510 miles a day in this. I'm assuming it's, you know, the original rear end original transmission, we're going to be running 50, 55. So that is a lot of driving. So we got to get, we got to speed things up. Let's just toss a lightning cube in here. See if we could find the buttons or doodabs or screwdrivers or rubbing forks together that get this thing to turn over, test the starter and the ignition, and then we'll move on to fuel and brakes. Never got them very specific battery guy needs for 50 Chevys that have been V8 swap. Nope. This was the cheapest one I could find with a go handle, you know. I've heard uh, some of you say you got to stop twirling these on paint. Okay, so now let's go ahead and drop this in. I got my post backwards. That's all right. Which one does what to the vehicle? Let's guess. Let's have a party. I'm going to say this one's negative. Are you the sad one? It's kind of shy guy. We're going to find out. I think we're good. I'm gonna need a cover for this. It's alarmingly close to the support section here. I don't hear anything sizzling. You know what I mean? Like when you go to the Bonanza buffet and they got all that rotten meat just sizzling out there for you. See if I could figure out this combination. <coughs> oh man. I'm just gonna try to, can we reduce the illness level a little bit? <sighs> yeah, it's real good, you know? <clears throat> There's no key. I got buttons everywhere. What's that do? Nothing. What's this do? Nothing. What's that do? Nothing. What's this do? Nothing. Let's see if the starter actually does the starter thing. It does. It's turning over. <laughs> yes. It's got a little gallop in it, but 20 years. Okay. Well, I guess I don't gotta call Scooby-Doo. Ain't no mystery around here. Button works. Guys, assuming late and, you know, the ignition still works, so I got my 50 Chevy key out. Oh yeah. 
Hear that? Well, look at this. Look at the uh, fuel gauge. I think this is on right there. All right, let's go test for voltage at the coil and see if this is working. We know the starter button works. If we can get this to run the coil, we're golden. Six dollar meter, can you work for four seconds? Testing for 12 volts at the ignition coil, and then we can kind of work our way downstream. I'm sure the points are gonna have to be filed. There's no way they're ready to rock after sitting for 20 years, you know. All right, meter test. Flip this over to horseshoe mode. Touch them together. Meter's alive. Okay. Is there anywhere to ground it other than mouse poop in there? Let's try that. 10 volts, 12 volts, 10 volts. There is a ballast resistor here. I have to keep our eye on that. Keep the eye on the prize. We got voltage to the ignition coil. All right, I think we take this air purify system thing off that no one runs, and then we'll get some more room. <coughs> Whoa. Then we'll take the lightning whirler cap off, and we'll try to rotate this on the cam of the distributor. See what I'm saying? And then we can get the points or the contacts to open and close. And we'll see if we got some, if we got sparkles there. And if we do, we're already about ready to fire this thing up. No, we're gonna have to file some points for sure. Well, it's kind of loose on there. I don't even think I have lightning hoses or nothing, to be honest. You know what? This looks like it was replaced right before it was parked, if I'm being honest. No sparkles. Let's see if I can turn the engine just to tickle. Nothing. Okay, that's what I figured. Pretty status quo. These points will run forever, but you gotta keep them clean, fellers. You know, it ain't no H-E in the eyes. Kind of difficult to show you guys, but this is where I'm looking, right down in there at that gap. So when I rock this, I'm wanting to see a spark in there, or at least hear a spark. Because we know we've got electricity jumping and grounding out there. So we don't have that right now. I'm going to run some emery cloth between those two pads. And i got to be careful because you sand it too much. We're going to widen that gap that so we're going to have to readjust the points. But I just need to clean those up enough to see if we can get something going on. Now, like I mentioned... That doesn't even look like it's been ran. Cap, rotor's in really good shape. And also the contacts look, I mean, that's a newer Allen key. Well, no, they had those for years with this trap door. But they do look newer. So I'm thinking this had a little tune-up right before she was parked, you know? You got the performer intake on it. You got the... Uh, Oh, that's unplugged. I didn't even see that. These fuel filters cause more fires than ex-wives. These O-rings swell, expand, and crack, and then this fuel leaks everywhere, and you're going to get a fire. 9.7 times out of... Get them off your car. Okay? It ain't good. We're going to do the same. I have to replace this hose as well. That's pretty crunchy down to here but we'll get to that in a minute nice vacuum plug piece of tape 
We'll note that and do nothing about it. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. We gotta get sparkles first. So this is all I'm using, a piece of 320 cloth, just folded over. I'm gonna slip this in between, just slip it in there. Slip. Do that, clean it up a little bit, and then we'll try that again. Well, the guy's got them pretty well cleaned up. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of brake clean. Just, not a lot, just tss, tss, And clean it up, you know what I mean? Brake clean dries or dissipates really, really quick, but it also is extremely flammable. So don't spray this in there and then get the testing. Your fingers might not have hair on them anymore. Ask me how I know. So anyway, I'm going to get in there and just clean them up a little bit. Oh. Oh. Well, that's, that's good. So I used the ranch dressing down here and got the engine rotatalized where a guy needs it over here for the crankshaft on the lightning whirler in there. That yellow plastic piece bounces on that camshaft. So now I got it in the right orientation and if you listen carefully, you know, shh, listen. Hear that? It's hot, you got spark. So, original points should be good to go. Original coil, so far we're doing great. Now I can come down here we're going to put an inline spark tester on this thing and we'll be able to see if we got spark at the plug just to make sure that rotor button, lightning rotor cap, lightning hoses, all of that are doing the deal. And I should probably go ahead and hook my lone wolf up, which is going to involve a jack, I think. i got to get underneath it here, slide under and get to the starter relay because there ain't no way I'm going to reach it up here. Mm -hmm. Okay, ow. Ooh, that feels good. Yep. Okay. Oh, it's got traction bars on it. Dual jips. Oh. It's got GPs, glass packs. glass down here on this headlight hang off the bumper okay what's that do it's crooked but it should work okay guys crawled underneath and got the lone wolf 6000 hooked up you know because i always work alone basically this just simplifies touching two wires together or jamming a screwdriver across the terminals one goes to the hot post on the battery. The other goes down to the start terminal on the starter, which normally when you turn the key or push a button in this case, it sends 12 volts to that solenoid. That easy. Boy, we got a lot of snap down here if I do it that way. Oh yeah. So let's get that inline spark tester just to make sure we got sparkles down by the sparkle later. Mission system put back together here, got the coil hooked back up, all of that. Spark tester's in line down here. So just keep an eye on that and it should flash. A little hard to see, but it is doing it. Side note, we're not pumping any fuel. So it's either out of fuel, tank is plugged, pickup sock is plugged. Really hard to say, but we've at least conquered spark. We have ignition, engines rotating. We're getting there. I should really quick, I'm trying to get back here and see what block casting this is. So I was able to get my pocket computer box flashlight down in there 
And it's a 3970014, which is a two or four bolt main 350, early 70s. Extremely, extremely common. Trucks, Camaros, cars like Chevelles, things like that. About a 92.436% chance it's a two bolt, but hey, it's a 350. So that's pretty good. Now, I think I'm gonna pull a spark later or two out, just glance on them, make sure they're there, I guess. And then we can probably go ahead and just dump some fuel down the app, see if this thing fires off. And we're trying to see if it's knocking like a Jehovah Witness or if it even makes oil pressure or tries to do any of that stuff before we get too far on undoubtedly what's going to be a brake struggle. Great. Let's see what this is going to tell us. We got Angica's R's. Well, they're pretty decent actually. A little bit of oil on the threads. Fouled, but not terrible. This would be what I would call reusable. To be honest. These puppies ain't getting any cheaper, so I think I'm just gonna put this one back in. Pretend we looked at all of them <laughs> and let her be. Just let her be. I do have a set and just in case we need some. Guys are gonna go ahead and fill up the carburetor bowls here using this pre-mixed fuel. It's got some two cycle oil in it and it's good for these old engines sitting. Lubricates everything up in the carb, lubricates the piston rings, the valves, you name it. And then if it doesn't start, we're not just washing the piston rings down. So it's a win-win compromise, win-barter trade. Something like that. These old Edelbrokens usually do pretty good sitting, if I'm being honest. Okay, she's full. Little down the app. Ow! That was way too much. Perfect. Didn't even check. Doesn't appear to be stuck. It is flooded now though. <laughs> All right, grab my Leatherman key. Turn the ignition back on. You can tell it's on when the fuel gauge pegs out past full. Grab the Lone Wolf. See what happens. Ugh. All right, bring in the thunders. There's trying. Flooded. It's going. Come on, baby. <laughs> it's just gonna sit here and idle. Water neck gasket is shot, or the intake is cracked. It runs. I didn't hear it knocking. All right. Didn't pump fuel. I think it's probably out. Evaporated, in other words. Water pump pumps. This just started spraying juice immediately. You run it down here, and there's some glycol in it. I have to double check. Yeah, it's got antifreeze in it. So that's good. I also noticed when I was under hooking the Lone Wolf 6000 up on the Reman starter that the uh, freeze plug that I could see with my peepers looked to be in really good condition. So that's good. And I could see the one on the front of the block here. So I don't think it ever froze up, which is honestly a godsend. We're on a mountaintop, Colorado. I think it gets cold here quite a bit. So I'm going to get the mouse droppings out of these Allen key hex head things, tighten that up, see if we can keep that from leaking. Fill up the carb again, see if we could fire it up and maybe bottle feed it for just a minute. Let it build some oil pressure, get this thing running. Let's see if we can bottle feed this thing. Valve drain even sounded good, but we've been cranking it for quite a bit, so it might have already built oil pressure. You know what I mean? There we go.
Got to find the, the right fuel splash. That's too much. It sounds good. That is still leaking. We're going to need a gasket on the intake. Hopefully it's not cracked. I thought I got enough in the bowls for the idle circuit to do something, but maybe not. to be honest. All right, we got to get all these droppings out of here. They're blowing either right into my retina or directly down the yap. Both scenarios are not good for your health. Let's see if we can figure that out. So I did tighten this up both sides and unfortunately it's just dumping coolant. But I mean, we got to look at the copper lining here. Water pump is pumping. So we'll have to, I'm gonna knock that out quick. Well, yeah, we're gonna to have to address that pretty soon. As I was gonna say, we could wait, but if I'm gonna keep running, that's just gonna keep dumping out. So I don't know, I think I'll clean this up a little bit. Maybe I'll put some fuel in it fast. Let's see if that fuel pump is gonna pump. Notice the lack of flying creatures up here. Kind of nice. Tank looks good, at least on the filler neck. Who knows? I haven't even looked under here yet. Yeah, there's a tank in it. So that's pretty neat. Also, check this out. Traction bars. She's a real hot rod. You know what I mean? So I'll dump five gallons in there if I can. And uh, we'll see if we can get this to start pulling some fuel. We're going to need that capacity for how many miles we're putting down, that's for sure. Got a leaf blower here. What is this? Black and Decker. Try to get some of this stuff out of here. is straight piped. She's pretty loud. Okay, we dump a few gallons down and see if we can pull some fuel from the back or could just leak on the ground. Could leak on the way up. Could be plugged. Likely. Very. 20 years is tough on fuel tanks. It really, really is. But we've gotten lucky before. Nope. Field jug, passenger seat, most likely. Okay. I'm gonna take this glass filter out here and never put that back in again. Then I'm gonna take some brake cleaner or carb cleaner or gasoline, or whatever you got. We're gonna back feed this filter. And what I'm trying to do here is soak the stuff in the fuel pump, the pump fuel. This will soften it up again, the diaphragm and all that stuff. Brake parts cleaner expands things naturally. And you can hear it filling. Okay, we're gonna let that just sit and cook. I don't know, nine minutes, 48 seconds, something like that. And then when we crank the engine again, if it's healthy, it should at least spit out the brake fluid that we just put in and or hopefully start pulling from the tank. I do not have another tank. Hindsight being 914, I probably could have sent one of those two years ago, but the guy's busy, okay? All right, mean whilst 
I'm gonna I'm gonna do nothing. I'm gonna put my this screwdriver away, I guess. Okay, we'll crank her again and see what this little devil's gonna tell us over here. starter machine but that is looking like a dead fuel pump but I think we're gonna go ahead and prime it let it run again sometimes it just takes some ripums to really get these pumps pump laden well great news I dumped half a can of this down the app here well not the app the inlet to the yapper and this is running through the pump and I could hear bubbling so it's actually forcing fluid back into the tank and additionally, your rest better gooder news. I don't see any puddles. And if we do, we'll ignore it. So the fuel line seems to be intact. We're just going to try to get this thing pumping. Yeah, there's 35 bucks, but listen, $35 saved is $35 earned. So let's uh, prime this up again and see if we can wake this thing up. I uh, put a little bit too much in there. <laughs> Whoops, she's flooded. No fuel. Boy, that is acting like a cracked. Might be the housing. I'm not quite sure. We might have used our. Huh. Well, in the rig here, I think Kevin threw this in for me. It's like an old and sitting in the sun. And it's a small block fuel pump. So I guess we just get to changing this out. Hopefully it's got, yep, we got gaskets. We could maybe, maybe get this thing to come around, but the one thing we do not have right now is time. So let's just jump in, get this fuel pump swapped. The sooner we can do that, the sooner we can get this thing idling, test the fuel tank, make sure we got head gaskets, oil pressure, we gotta see if it's charging, if it's gonna stay cool. There's a lot that hinges on this thing just running like a sewing machine. Well, that's what we're going with anyway. Get out of there. Old pump out here. Now I'm able to squish this diaphragm. You can hear wind, but when I do that and hold my finger over this, it's not creating any suction whatsoever. So she's dried up. I need to get this fitting out for this pump. And um, I've got the right hardware for that, so that shouldn't be an issue. Now I've seen a lot of guys struggle with the old fuel pump push rod down here and do some crazy stuff to get that held up to slide this in and there's a couple different things here one there's a bolt hole on the front of Chevrolet blocks you can pull that bolt out and it's a sight window where you can just run a longer bolt in after you put the rod up and that bolt will come in the side and hold it for you you could stick a screwdriver in there you could do any of that but the easiest way is to simply just rotate the engine until that push rod is on the base lobe of the camshaft that runs the fuel pump. And you have all sorts of room. 
you just push it up with your finger, slide this into the block, and you're done. And then put the bolts in. And then it's not trying to spring back and work around on you like this. Just take a second and just get the engine where it needs to be. And this rod, you can just run it up with your finger and it'll stay up there, I promise you. It'll take you just two minutes. It's just setting it up correctly to get it put in. Well, up here I've peeled off three gaskets and a whole bunch of silicones. And this is a little rotted around the edge. So I'm going to clean all this back up. New thermostat, new gasket. Get that put back on so we can stop leaking out our ice cube juice. Got the new line on the fuel pump. I am going to probably swing up a big line somewhere up here or something and put a filter in and then run that back down to the pump to make this easily serviceable on the side of the road at 3 a.m. I have a feeling this fuel is going to be very varnished and have rust flakes in it just by smelling. So we're going to need to change filters frequently and I'm going to have to go pick up a box of those as well. And uh, we should have this thing patched up back together and hopefully idling here pretty soon. As soon as I get that pump on and get this figured out. So this fella here is in really bad shape. It's pitted. I don't know if it's true or not. And it would take 42 hours to clean. So I just splurged and got a new one here. This one did not come with the rubber O-ring, which I was hoping it would. Uh, but no big deal. Just doing an old school gasket there. Got an Edelbroken 160 degree T-stat. Um, it's going to be a little bit cooler as we get more east, but it's, or I should say hotter as we go east. It's cooler out here west. But that'll be probably just fine or good enough to let us know that the heater core leaks in a little bit here. Get this put back together and then I'll move on to the fuel pump here. Another trick you could do here with that fuel pump push rod is just put some tacky grease on it, like wheel bearing grease. Push it up in that bore and it'll hang in there long enough for you to dip the pump in. But again, you're going to want to rotate the engine and get it to where that rod will actually push up in there. It makes it a lot easier. So I got this new to me old line to run up to there. And I'm going to put the filter pre-pump so we don't mess up this pump. And again, I'm going to try to just bring it up here somewhere so we can change it easily. Fuel system complete. Looks a little bit wild but listen i'm just thinking into the futures here because this could get real ugly got a line coming from the tank she's uh fastened down with some nasa clamps comes up into this fill tray i do not like these but that's all they had they didn't have a wix and they didn't have the clear microguard either this is a microguard but chrome ends in 33 for the chrome 03 for the clear 3 8 but anyway it'll work for now we'll have to pick up some more and then we get a clear one in here we can monitor this and then this goes down to the pump so i'm not even going to worry about putting one in here on the way to the fuel make it happen here because hopefully we're catching everything right here if it's really bad we can run two in line we can put another one in here one in here and all we got to do is pop the hood boom replace them i don't have to roll around on the ground down there late at night or whenever it is, early in the morning, afternoon. I don't know, I'm just saying this is easier. Crying in the mud. So now, let's go ahead and prime this up again and uh, fire it up and see if it's gonna pull fuel with the new pump. Unfortunately, we can't see what it looks like, but can we at least pull fuel? Be good. Okay, we need you right now. Couple by the hooses here. Went ahead and snipped on a new battery terminal. I've only got one vice grip with me, so I didn't want to waste that clamping this on because we're going to need it for fighting brake lines here in a little bit. Also, this is my uh, parts tray. We'll keep that just in case. Guy always needs 3 8 hardware. The other clamp that was stripped, you never know. Just kind of sprinkle that in, it'll stay in place. All right, let's see what we get. Yeah, 
Yes. Oh, I got her unhooked. <laughs> Where is it? Oh, here it is. I gotta wrap this in tape or something so we don't get arcage slash fire. Does make it more exciting though. Okay, hats. Okay. That's pretty good. That fan is in terrible condition. It was not pulling feel. Hope that accelerator pump isn't shot. You know what I mean? Yes. Too little, too late. Too much, too soon. This is, I spilt five gallons. Well, this is the story of where we're at right now. I think it might be pumping. Coolant leak is fixed. Doesn't want to idle. Timing sounds a little off. Oh, a little too much. Bring her back. Ain't got no accelerator pump. You just gotta tickle them in the right spot and they'll giggle back at you. You know what I mean? That's what we're trying to do right now. There we go. Sounds great. It's got to be making oil pressure. Haven't looked at the gauge in there yet, but I'd be able to hear it by now. All right. Yes. It's idling. Had to get my choke tool in there. Smoking quite a bit of blue. Man, it sounds good. Don't hear any big heavy misses. We know it's chewing on bad gas. What do the gauges say? Ah, uh, we got oil pressure. What does that say? 60? 60 pounds? No. I don't know, we'll have to come back to this. I can't, I don't know if this is 40 or 60. It's charging. All right. Can't run it too long. We don't have a lot of ice cube juice in it. My choke lever came off there, but it's alive. 20 years. Oh, it's so nice working up here. Quiet, peaceful, smell of wood burning stoves going. 50 Chevy, not a bad day in the office. You know, I can feel it's warm with my thermometers here, right? Well, that's a bad example. I have to use this hand, but, oh yeah, it's about 130, 140 degrees. There's no reason it shouldn't run without a choke. And I just happened to glance down. These puppies is about to fall out, literally. So let's start over on this. Start adjusting this fuel, make it happener. And uh, get the idle circuit dialed in. Let me get this close, then we can go back to timing. We get that close, we'll come back to fuel, and then we'll swing back around to timing, and then we'll just rev on it and blow the cobwebs out. You know what I mean? 
Okay, good. Yep, plain. Well, unfortunately, I found a big issue. Uh, this carburetor is messed up. I'll, uh, I'll kill it and I'll explain what's going on here. So I got a big air leak on this and I've been chasing it and chasing it. Took some carb cleaner, sprayed the base, sprayed the intake gasket, uh, plugged this off, disconnected this, which is probably the windshield wiper, I'm guessing. Plugged that, that's an air fitting coming in the back of the carburetor there. And uh, chased it down to the rear four barrels. And what happened is someone pried open the butterflies. These got stuck, I'm assuming moisture, air, rust. The back of the butterflies are peeled up. Like someone took a screwdriver and was trying to free them up or something. Well, it's just a massive air leak. I'll never be able to tune the idle circuit in this. It's pretty well junk. So I think I'm gonna take this one off. And unfortunately you can't really, you could get rebuild kits for these on the lines. But I ain't got the interwebs and I ain't got time. So we're gonna throw this in the trunk, take it home. It's definitely a rebuilder, but I'm gonna go pick up a new one and that should solve all of this and we can continue to work forward here. Now, it runs. It has oil pressure even with the old oil. I've got ice cube juice in it, it's circulating. I didn't get to run it long enough to see if the thermostat would open, but that's new, that should not be an issue. Hoping that the uh, temperature gauge works correctly. So we're getting there, but I'm gonna go ahead and run into town quick. I think I got time. There's also some rain starting to move in, so it'd be a good time to take a break. Grab one of these, we'll throw that on tonight. I wanna get this thing idling, probably back on the ground, test the clutch, make sure we have that, and then we're gonna be down to brakes and all the small stuff. And the small stuff does add up though. Believe you me, no, yeah. All right, we got the broken, it'll broken, coming off with varnish feel. That's fine. Oh boy. Well, anyway, like I said, we'll throw it in the back seat. Take her home with us, <laughs> if we make it. Discovered yet another issue and really wish I would have taken that off before I went down the mountain into town. But an Edelbrock is what's called a square bore. These are in a square shape. Here you go. This intake is a spread bore. So for this to work and seal properly and not have any leaks, we need a spread bore to square bore adapter plate that would go in here. Unfortunately, I don't have that, and it's getting pretty late, so I'm not sure what, the, I mean, I know it's not going to work, so I guess I'm going to have to go down the hill again and get the adapter. We just, we got too long of a drive to be futzing around with this on the road, so let's just get it done now, but it's really putting me behind schedule. It's, uh, sun's going down soon. I haven't even hit the brake pedal or the clutch pedal with it running. I have no idea what's going to happen. We haven't investigated the master cylinder. We are deeply behind schedule, but I want to get this running correctly. So back down the hill once again. Well, guys back and as you could tell, we are working in the headlights of my rental. I've gone 796 million miles today, but all of them just been up and down the mountain to the parts stores. This particular vehicle has not moved. Great. That's Grant. Finally found this, which I guess is rarer than hen's teeth now. You know, this hot rod and stuff is dying. Here is the spread bore side to the square bore. So this has a particular gasket right here. It's going to lay on there, it's going to come up like this, and that's where our Edelbroken is going to sit on top of. It does come with some hardware here, but from experience, these studs are generally too short. But this is a different hardware package. I might be able to make this work. It looks like they give you a couple different ways to do this. 
I'll play around with it a little bit. I did buy longer studs. I think they were Mr. Gasket or something. I don't know. Mrs. Felpro or whatever. If we don't use them, we can return them. I'm going to go ahead and just get this plopped on for tonight. Get this thing closed up. And then we're going to have to come back and hit it early tomorrow morning. And get on it again. And we can wire up. This has got a digital choke. So we don't have to jam screwdrivers in it anymore. We'll have to wire that up. And do all the vacuum stuff. Speaking of vacuum. Has this been drilled? Has not. I want to make sure I don't have a giant vacuum leak there. All right, give me a couple minutes. I'm going to plop this on in the darks. Sweet. Well, here we go. This is on. You can see the adapter there. I'm not going to tighten it down tonight because tomorrow I've got to put either a pipe plug back here or the correct fitting to run the vacuum for, I assume, is going to be the wipers and all that stuff. But like I say, we'll wire in the digital choke. We're going to lean this way out. We'll uh, get this plugged back in, get the positive crankcase ventilation system pluggalized up, all that stuff. I kind of just wanted to get it sealed up for tonight. It's been raining off and on up here. And then we got a whole big other list to jump into. But that's going to do it for tonight. I'm going to go ahead and unhook that, I think. Okay. Well, good morning from beautiful Southwest Colorado. It's day two on the 1950 Chevy here. Trying to get it running after 20 years and drive 1,400 miles back home. And well, <laughs> it hasn't moved an inch. So that's pretty good. It is a balmy 32 degrees as the sun just crests the mountaintops over there. Should heat up pretty quick. Late last night, we were dealing with this fuel make it happener. I'm gonna quickly knock that out this morning get that done and then crawl underneath here and change the oil and the oil filter. Good morning, Jack. Oh, I'm going to need you in a second, actually. And now we can get it fired back up, tune on it a little bit, and we could just cross it off the list. It runs. And then we can move on to, well, we got to see if we got a clutch. I think that'd be a good place to start. Decided to go ahead and plug the vacuolizer port back here. I'd rather have this thing tuned in pretty good than potentially have other accessories that run with the vacuum. There could be vacuum leaks under the dash, likely very. So let's just plug it off, know that we don't have any leaks, and get this thing dialed in for a long trip. This should go pretty quick here. Yep. Yeah. Fuel make it happener is in. I still need to drill this little hole out right here so the throttle linkage will slide through there. And I actually picked up a cotter pin, believe it or not. There was like a bent nail or something in there that was getting stuck in the linkage last night. Oh, gotta put this on too. Next, I'm going to go ahead and wire up the digital ch choke on that. We're going to throw in a 12 volt switched. So we'll probably just join the party here, jam it through there somewhere. And then we've got this really neat and orderly fuse panel over here hanging out. So if I can find something, oh, that already came out wherever that wherever that went. Go ahead and just get a keyed 12 volt here. So we turn the key on, it'll shoot electricity to the choke. It'll choke it for us. And as it heats up, it'll back that choke off automatically. Now I gotta trace some of these wires here. I have a feeling some of this probably isn't really being used right now. Well, a lot of poking and prodding around here. Starting to figure out what some of this stuff is. First of all, this is a blower motor. We may need that. This here, I noticed the up and down arrow and started following the wires. You may also notice the antenna is further up. Yep, there is a antenna motor in there. So we're gonna leave that be, we ain't got no radio. And I took this out of that switch, 
tested this wire, which jumps from the blower motor, and that does have 12 volt switched on my key right here. So we'll run a wire, plug it into this. This is a nightmare. I just, we're gonna pretend none of this is happening. And then we'll have 12 volt up to the uh, choke. I feel pretty good about running the car yesterday, getting all the oil and sludge to the bottom of the pan. There we go. Not a magnetic plug. Oil looks pretty good. Not too bad. I'm not sure what kind of filter is in it yet. We'll pop that out and take a look in a second. So this is pretty neat. It's a really old Jiffy Loop filter. And then I got to looking up on the windscreen and sure enough, date's gone, of course, been burned off by the sunlights, but we're going to be putting a Wix back in, of course, and uh, running the old heavy duty diesel, the old T4, 1540. It's got all the dinosaurs and vitamins Feller needs on these old flat tappet engines. It likes it a lot. Got this jacked up now. That sounds fine. You know, what do you mean? Oh boy, these don't look like the right lug nuts for the wheel. But I was thinking, well, let's look at this up in the air. At some point, we're gonna have to get tires on this. <clears throat> oh, maybe so. The wheel's been wallered out or the... Well, I guess that's the deal. I stand corrected. We're gonna go ahead and give her a fire this morning. I put in a clear fuel filter over there, so the line is dry, and so is this fuel make it happener. So I'm gonna give it a little prime. It might take a minute cranking here before it fires off this morning, but that's okay, because we just changed on the Earl too. You gotta build oil pressure, you know? before you fire them up. Okay, let's see what happens. Yep. What a difference. What a difference. Right out the box. Still isn't pumping fuel, that's why she that's why she quit on us. I am gonna bump up the speed just to tickle here until we get things sorted out. Almost out of false fuel here. Starting to pump fuel. Looks like honey over there, that's fine. Gonna need more true fuel, I think. Oh, is it doing the thing? Well, I'll be dead. It does want just a little more fuel. There we go. Not bad at all for a cold start, I can tell you that much. And when I say cold, it is, it is pretty cold up here this morning. Of course, we're 74,000 feet higher than, you know, down there. There she's coming around. Listen to that thing. 
see if I can burp some air here. Might be airlock. She ain't really suckalize them. Might have a plugged fuel line already. Uh oh. That ain't good. Okay, a guy was using this clicky clacky, wasn't getting any fuel from the tank. So then I uh, blew through it, got some bubbles in the back again, and then tried to suck on it, wasn't getting anything. I think that pickup screen's already getting full. So I used a brake cleaner can and just used the wind out of it. If you hold it right or upside down, blow backwards. Aerated the screen, was able to get some varnish fuel out with the clicky clacky. Now I have the mechanical hook back up, so we'll start it again, let it run and see what, what we're getting out of there. All right, it's pulling good. A little bit of rust, but not terrible. Keep an eye on that. Since we got her fired up here. Boy, that fan blade looks scary. Gonna give her a little Italian tune-up. Just dump this right down the app. Shot a B12, you know what I mean? She's tuned. Guy can bring this idle down a little bit now. You know. There we go. Sounds pretty good. Not bad after a long, long, long nap. A little bit of a stumble, but it'll come around. That smokes all the stuff burning off. It's been sitting all these years. Still pumping fuel, and I can't believe it, but it doesn't look terrible right now. Although it's coming in pretty slow. Look at that fan. All right, car's up in the air in the back, but we got a flat one down here. Only on the bottom though, you know. I want to test the clutch. Not like we're going to move anywhere, but it'll be super obvious if I try to put this in gear and the clutch isn't doing anything. She's just going to grind it till she tries to find it. Okay? Plan. <laughs> Okay, clutch in, first gear, I 
it went in. Let's see if it chugs it. Yep. Reverse. I think. Yep. All right, we got a clutch. I don't think anything else. I don't. It's been a while. I don't know what all these buttons do in here. That's headlights. That's the old choke, I think. Those are vents. Okay. So here's what I think the guy's going to do. I'm going to get the back jacked up as well. The feller here has got an air compressor. I could probably air that one tire up so I can get a jack under there. Get it up on all four paws, or off of it, I should say. And then knock all those off, throw them in my Randall Jeep thing. Truck, car, it's terrible. Run that down and start getting the good tires mounted. And then I could probably come back up and start working on the brakes. It runs. It's staying at about 180 degrees so far. We have a clutch. Things are looking pretty good. And it's going to come down to brakes. And it's not going to be good on this car. I'm just avoiding it, to be honest. See if this will hold any wind. Help me get the jack under the rear. going up. Good old Michelin's. Well this is pretty interesting. Oh by the way I decided to put it on jack stands. Them are the the hobo freight ones. We're just we're gambling today. Instead of jacking it up by the axle because then you have to fight the tire in. But I rolled this out of the way. Wait a minute. That is not the original rear differential. This is a newer style GM 10 bolt. And I can tell by this number right here, 1240212, that's like a 70 to 72 Chevelle, early Camaro, uh, Monte Carlo kind of brake drum. So it could be this rear axle is where the engine actually came from. Not quite sure, but this has all been swapped. That's probably why the traction bars are in here. And now I'm even more worried that uh, that little old brake master is going to still do brake things. I'm also stretching that brake line. I just realized that's really not good. So I should um, probably put a jack under that differential, bring it up just a little bit. So I thought I'd show you guys this really quick. First of all, this is really cool. The uh, past owner drove this car year-round. In fact, I heard about us. He took this on a ski trip. He drove up to Aspen with this car. But if you look at all the duct tape and the uh, insulation, and we know that the heater works, he drove this thing year-round, basically. But anywho, under the floor here, down in here, is the brake master. If we have any sort of luck left in this annual year, I will certainly use all of it right now to not have to replace this. It is a bear. But Kevin's going to help me. I think he's going to pump a lot. I'll crack the bleeder. I don't need that where it's going. And if we have any luck, the master cylinder will come back around. And we'll have brakes. No, nope, probably not. Okay, here we go. Okay, go ahead. Oh yeah, we got juice. Okay, again. Bunch of air. I wonder if we shouldn't top it off again just to make sure. The drum is moving though, so the wheel cylinders. Hold the brake again. Okay, let off and then hold it. Yeah, that stops the drum. Huh. I can't believe it, but I got to. I'm looking right at it. We got a pedal and I'm not hearing any hissing. The old broken line. That's just the fronts. Uh, he's going to top it off again. I'm going to figure out the size back here. 
Some of them used M&Ms. Some of them were the 516s or whatever they were. Bleed the rears and we might have brakes. We got fluid. Okay, again. Holding pressure. Floor. I don't think the rear ever got air in it. Well, by a miracle on Elm Street or whatever it's called, we've got brakes. Now, I will say the parts I did order ahead of time are rubber lines, wheel cylinders, and shoes for the brakes here. I think I even have outer wheel bearings. But we could just throw those in the trunk for now. I am going to check this. I see modernized. It's almost uh, disc brake grease, actually. But it's a little loose. I'm just going to pop one off, hook my peepers on it, make sure it looks decent. May repack it. I don't know yet. And then uh, reassemble. Snug it up a little bit. So these are the OG bearings. The old ball bearing wheel bearings. And in uh, recent years, they have an upgrade for these. You can get into a modernized ball bearing and then a traditional roller bearing. But basically, this is the race here which I'm looking at with you right now. And it looks good. It looks really good. I'm gonna shoot a little bit of fresh grease, smear it around, slam it back in, adjust it, pretend we replaced everything, call it good. Well, curiosity caught the cow. I'm on the drinker side. Made in the USA. Still another old school bearing. Looks pretty good. Race looks good. Got good action. Gonna fill it up, fill the cap, put it all back together. They're, they were both set a little bit loose for my liking, so I'm gonna get another another turn or a little titch in them, another notch, I guess, on the castle nut. And then we should be good. And I'm gonna go back down the hill, get some tires, come back up the hill, get them mounted, and then we might be ready for a test drive in this old thing. Oh, still got to clean it out, I guess. Old thing cleaned up pretty good, I got to say. Whatever fake bear skin cover this is really resisted the mice, actually. They didn't eat this. They just ate everything underneath of it. I had failed to crack the mitten box. I apologize about that, so we're circling back around. Bunch of Denver maps, Colorado maps, Midwest. The newest piece of paperwork I found in here is 1999. Here's a set of tires that were on it. That was 95, I believe, 94. Whole set for 234 bucks. Boy, those days are long gone. Here's a starter in 99, $39 installed. And a whole bunch of stuff from Sears. I mean, he really tried to keep up on the car. So that's really cool. I'm gonna put it all back in the mint box and keep it there with the car. Guys, back from town with tires and a course. Had to go with the Cooper Cabras. These are the same size, 225, 70, 14 on a little fit. Feel like a fool. I didn't measure this wheel. I just assumed it was a 14 and it's a 15. So that did not go on this. And we are no longer going to have a spare, but that's okay. I got to thinking before we put tires on this, I think I'm going to go ahead and crawl underneath while I got it up in my teeth and uh, check and or fill that rear end because the cover's pretty wet. So chances are it's low as, you know, it's up there. Well, unfortunately, the filler plug on the side of the third member there is uh, stripped out. It has just been boogered up. So we're just going to pretend it's full. Okay, plan. 
Here we go. First time moving in 20 years. crawling down this road and there's just sheer drop-offs and it winds back and forth and uh, Kevin's gonna go in front of me that way if I uh, lose brakes or whatever I'm gonna hit that pretty little tracker and or a tree and then he could drag me out of the car quickly that's the plan anyway so far it's got pretty good brakes and I'm just kind of gonna let first gear slow me down as much as possible. First time on the road in 20 years, coming up on mile one of about 1400. We've got to tick off here in the next couple days. This is gonna be some adventure, I can tell you that much. But check out these views, this is just gorgeous. Hard to explain this grade we're on, but it's nothing to sneeze at, I can tell you that much. Front left is grabbing. Pretty good. Well, here's where that car sat all those years. Made it down the hill successfully, got to my motel, got a ride back. Now I'm gonna take the rental. It's about an hour drive, hour and 10 minutes to the airport, drop that off, get a ride back to my motel, finish loading the 50 Chevy, and then after sundown, I'm sure it'll be tonight. We'll see how bright the lights are. We have to make a decision to leave tonight or just try to get up sunrise and We'd have to put in two 10 hour days basically on the road to get back on schedule. So we'll see what happens here. We're gonna help clean up and then hit the road. So back at the motel with the 50, getting everything out of the rental, getting ready to head off and dump the rental off. Wanted to work on the charging system before it got dark. On the way down here, the wires going to the amp meter gauge were melting. I think it's overcharging. There was a note that this is a single wire, but we had the voltage regulator installed. So I've got it jumped right now. We're gonna try that out. But I don't wanna burn all my digital wires up in this thing. And we're gonna need that charging whirler, especially if we're gonna be running lights later. Well, here's the deal. Charging whirler's bad, she's stuck on full sing. Usually only happens when the battery's bad, but we know that's not the case because I replaced it. So I went and got cleaned up, found a one wire. It's not in yet. It'll be here in a couple hours. So here's what I'm gonna do. Guys are gonna go ahead and eat supper, throw some groceries down the neck, wait for that part to get in, go over and pick that up, come back here, drop it off into the car, then drive over to the airport, drop the rental off, get in an Uber or something, come back to the motel. And after all that rigmarole, I'll see you here late, late, late tonight. Well, we made it back. Owning old cars, tip number 342, subsection B. Always park. Always park under a light, fellers. And you're gonna want a back end because you're gonna need jumped. Okay. Got it. So let's uh, 
boy it's getting it's got to be down to 30 degrees again let's go ahead and try to get this done tonight because i want to be out of here right when the sun is coming over the hill so uh need some sort of stripped out allen key looking thing and probably a 9 16 yep all right here we go guy picked up one of these hat lights and i gotta admit what a saver and it's on low right now actually so i'm gonna start carrying one of these around not bad for i think it was like 16 bucks or something like that and it's rechargeable anywho's we're getting there i had to find the right size that thing so if any guys curious this is what the boots looking like We've got harbor freight extra fuel jug we're gonna fill out tomorrow this is all the extra fluids i got brake fluid gear oil fuel hose i got an extra set of gauges just in case and then this is the i got we talked about it earlier shoes wheel cylinders stuff like that some rags i picked up a fire extinguisher never used to do this and then i ran that corvette from florida back to tennessee and it was just a godsend i just felt like i needed to get one and man did we ever need it okay so that's that thankfully this thing's quiet so we could fire it up it's now the next day basically gonna keep this guy because we got a core i think it was 20 28 bucks something like that we'll turn that back in but let's go ahead and fire it back up oh i should have grabbed the meter out of there well actually i got an amp meter we can just do that let's fire this back up see if it's charging properly by the way trip down the mountain not bad at all We've done a lot worse, fellers and fellettes and kiddos. This is looking more normalish, but I am going to have to run a meter across it. By the way, it fired right up. I like how all these wires just kind of dance. Still don't know what to do. Probably old radio. Well, I was worried about that. The one wire I ordered didn't look like a one wire when I picked it up and it's not a one wire so we're gonna have to create our own field of energy I think I got where did it go I got a little jumper I just got to find that again and excite this thing see what it does notice something here I happen to feel it also because it's dark ironically see those splatters The rat has sprung a leak and it's shooting coolant out into the fan, which is sending it across. So that's concerning. 1400 miles with a leaking rad ain't gonna work. We'll just have to deal with that tomorrow. I'm still looking for my little jumper doodabby. Oh, there it is. Fell down here. Right here. Got her jump to the field. Boom. That'll come up under throttle. A little. Oh, not much. As long as it's not over 14.5, we're not going to cook the battery or melt any wires. Okay, we're good to go for the morning. We're going to pretend we lock stuff. and Guy's going to grab a couple hours of sleep dump some cold water on my head and uh, we're just gonna hit the road tomorrow see what happens you just you don't know till you try well good morning car's still here that's pretty neat it means a couple things one the rock I put under the tire stayed put and two no one figured out how to steal it yet that's pretty neat today is the big day we had a pretty good drive yesterday got down from the mountains pretty good clip in actually but now the big part. We're gonna to have to jam this thing on the interstate for a little bit, get off into the back roads, start heading for Kansas, get through Missouri, work our way down to South Central Tennessee, basically. I have a lot in mind for this trip. 
Uh, today my goal is actually to get to a semi-private yard that has thousands of cars and they're all 1980 and older or a huge portion of it and I'd kind of like to go through there with you guys and check some things out but in a normal car that's a full day drive we have to try to do it in this and we got to try to get there before the sundown so <laughs> see what we could do just going to quick check on the Earl yep none of it fell out that's that's good and then I'm gonna grab the four-way and tighten up these goofy lugs uh, just to make sure we don't lose any of our circular road dampeners and I ain't got a spare at this juncture we'll fire this thing up and jam it on the road we know the gas tanks full because well it was leaking all over the ground yesterday <laughs> allegedly well, step into my office here. Let's see how we do on a cold start this morning. Yep. Wow. All the oil pressures. Okay, well that's a good sign. All right, let's jam it on the road. First big obstacle, getting around Denver. Have you heard of this place? It's pretty big. fuel stop of many 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 just clicked off about an hour hour or so only got about 21 left that's fine don't worry about that it's all been through this super heavy dense fog it has a lot of moisture in it the front of the car is wet the road's wet kind of sketchy i got locomotive brakes it takes me about a mile to shut her down at speed they just aren't made to run that fast, you know what I mean? Thankful for the upgraded rear drums, but they're still drums and, well, they're drumming. That's about it. You also forgot to tell me this morning to stop by the parts store and get some radiator fix. So I'm going to pop the hood, see how bad that is, fill up, check the fuel mileage, and then we can calculate how far we can get in between stops. See what happens. I don't know if it's starting to self-heal or what, but it's not as bad as it was yesterday it's pressurized it is staying cool i snugged up this valve cover here uh, late last night as well we were getting some weepage out of there that seems to be doing pretty good all in all no complaints yet and pretty incredible when you think about it these are the points the rotor the cap the hoses the sparkulators and the entire ignition system is what was in it. That's pretty cool. Fuel filter, looking pretty good. A little bit of rust in there, but not terrible. When we stop, I'm gonna pick up one of these as well. Actually, I should pick up a few. This stuff burning in there smells really good. Of course, comes right into the cab, so. All right, let's see what we got for fuel mileage. 
Of course, I'm gonna be running, every time I feel, I'm gonna run a can of this in there. Right now, it's worse than what I had expected. We're at about eight and a half miles per gallon. But listen, this could come around. We should easily be 10 and above. I'm probably only running at 25 to 2800 RPM right now, so. All right, I'm gonna grab some groceries for the neck, hit the road, hopefully this fog clears up pretty soon. Well, we have successfully made it to Great Bend, Kansas. Yeah, we put down a lot of miles today. Unfortunately, most interstate, but I had to do that to get here before sunset, which is coming very soon. Got a surprise for you guys. Chad, the owner over here, he's gonna give us a uh, kind of a private tour of uh, the yard here. And how many cars do you have here, Chad? Uh, I think around a couple thousand. Couple thousand, so a few more than Rusty Acres. <laughs> And uh, we're actually going to try to find some tail lenses for the car, which I need, and just see what else we could find. And if you guys see something, just give them a call. They can find you on Facebook, YouTube, eBay. Facebook, YouTube. Um, nobody else is on on Facebook. Nobody show on YouTube as a channel. I feed all my new inventory to there. As something comes in, hits the ground, do a video on it to show it to you guys. So That's awesome. I saw a 56 Buick on there last night, actually. Um, he normally just doesn't let people wander i'm sure safety liability insurance exactly. but if you got a project hey i need parts for this car he'll help you out and show you where to go in here so let's go check this out while we got some daylight left so if you're wondering why i'm excited well you just don't see this in yards anymore it's all new plastic well i'll just call it junk and he's got just it's a sea of what, 30s to 80s, mainly? Probably 30s to 80s stuff, yeah. Awesome. We're going to head over to the 50s GM section, but I keep going, ooh, ooh, already walking through here. A lot of these are really complete, actually. That's pretty, pretty astounding. Look at all the Buicks. Pretty solid. I saw a four-door 56 over there. He was just telling me he's... Still working on organizing, but I gotta say, this is one of the most organized yards I've ever seen. Plus, you're not tripping over stuff. But you work here every day, you gotta have it this way, right? Yeah, exactly. That's why the roads are rocked. I try to keep things maintained. And... Yeah. 57 Chevy over there. If we headed in the right direction, is this where this you is wanted 50s to go? GM, that's 40s and 50s GM. Wow. Yeah. These poor old things sit outside and they just get. I think I might just pssst, Craigslist rebuild them.
55. Boy, look at that stainless. Wow. Nice emblems. How long have you been doing this? Pretty much my whole life. Um, my dad did it as a hobby when I was a kid. Yeah. This facility, up until 2011, this facility right here was all late model. Oh, really? Wow. Everything in here, everything from that white building all the way back to those telephone poles was a late model production yard. Nothing in here over 20 years old. You know, lots of late model pickup stuff. In 2011, I made a deal with the owner to buy the facility. Okay. But I was going to do strictly old cars. So he leveled this thing in 2011. Wow. And you just started over, basically. I started over. I had about 120 cars that I moved in at that point, and I've done all this since 2011. Wow. Congrats. Look, look at the fleet line. So I was... I guess those are a little bit better. Yeah, that one's not too bad. I was trying to explain to fellers and fellettes. So see how ours is a shorter window and you kind of have that, that stubby traditional coupe look. And this is a fleet line. I guess it just... These were really popular for a while, then the coupes got popular. I don't know which is popular today, or more popular, I should say, but they're both beautiful in my opinion. This one needs a headliner. Probably. Look at this old Chevrolet pickup. He just saved it out of a lean-to. Look at that fan. It's the cutest little thing. These old things could talk. Oh, look, the old farmer just stacked the plates up over the years. <laughs> One, two, three, four of them. When was that part? 73 it was parked. Wow. How to tell? It's a farmer's truck, toolbox, fuel tank, toolbox. What do we got? Oh, she's happy. Still a good toolbox. See all the driver's seats hammered. Passenger seat is perfect. Probably been a farm truck its whole life. We're going way back into the corner and then we're gonna work our way that way. There's so much good stuff in here. So you pull all this out of farms, I'm guessing? Ranches? Uh, wherever. The, the days of finding this stuff in the tree rows are pretty much over, as you well know. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, you know, an iron guy will be able to clean up and there may be a vehicle in there. I buy a lot of this stuff from guys who have had it stashed for years and finally realize that, hey, I'm not going to get to all these. Yeah. You know, that type of a thing. Oh, goodness. We got to look at it. I got Tom fooled with some with some paint and keystones. What is this, a 38 or 37? Uh, 38, 30, odd, yes. 38, yeah. Still very cool. Here's one of Dodge's 47 made up truck models. Snow Fighter, Fighter. And it has a, I was just told this is a factory plow, factory hydraulics. You just order them this way. Please tell me it's a big block. No, it's not a big block. Oh. All the hydraulics. Yeah, sure enough. Had a throttle lock on it. All factory stuff. Really? Yeah. That's cool. You know, I'm not opposed to that stripe. That's pretty cool, actually. Well, I think it's a pretty neat truck. Well, this was a workhorse, too. Check out the rear bumper. This is what I had to do to get this thing. Oh, you cut it out. Grew up right through there, right through the bumper. Fortunately, it didn't twist up the tailgate. But... It's crazy how trees like that grow. Cool old thing. Add that to your list. Snow fighter. Here's a uh, 38 GMC thingamawidget chicken coop RV looking thing. I like it. I like all the random knobs and levers and valves and... Oh yeah, she'll run. Hey fellers, I found a better Corvette than the green one. And a parts car. You guys will have to bleep bloop down below. We were just sitting here chatting about how neat it would be to 
pick one of these cars, you know, obviously they've been just forgotten and Chad's started the process of saving them by getting them here, but can we take one of these, get it running and drive it out of here, try to use parts out of the yard and keep it cheap and affordable? Probably take a week or two, but we can maybe pull it off. It's a lot to choose from. But if you'd like to see something like that, bleep bloop it down there in the comments. Found this cute little going to town Ford. Pretty decent shape. It's got a straight in it. And uh, it's missing engine parts. But I just turned it by hand. It's not locked up. And then one of my all-time favorites is an International L110 over here. We're losing light, but I'll try to show you guys. Look at this thing. I built one of these, well, I don't know, 10 years ago and just fell in love with it. And this one is in really, really, really good shape. It, uh, it's got a whiskey dent on the other side. Clarence cleaned out a ditch, you know, that happens up here. That's really about it. Engine's in there. Don't know if it's stuck or not. But this is incredible. So that's a pretty cool truck too. There's just my brain's in overload right now. Little bus. Hey there, little feller. Doing a light check. That ain't so bad. One's obviously significantly brighter than the other one. But uh back here we've got tail lights it's the most important thing but they're not very red so we're actually going to run over to a shop get some spray paint and just spray paint the inside of these if we can get them off without breaking them just to try to prevent getting pulled over because that's a little not so gooderish what a beautiful night out here in kansas hmm Brand new. Got them back on the car. Look at that. Lots of red. I think that's going to work just fine. Ironically, the tail lights are brighter than the headlights. But that's okay. That's what ditches are for. You got two miles of ditches for every mile of highway. We'll just try to keep her between the mayonnaise and the mustard. Well, guys, I am beat. I'm gonna grab a room here, get some rest. It's been a really long day, but it's been a fun day. We definitely put some miles down. Tomorrow, we're gonna try to run again, another 12, 13 hours, whatever we can. Uh, got some work to do on the headlights. Was thinking about pushing on, but they're pretty dim. Just can't see nothing. We'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. See if this 50 Chevy is gonna make it all the way home. Good morning. Today's a day, a day that stuff happens. Captain's like, look, we got a big issue. And I didn't tell you yesterday because I was just hoping that it would self-heal, kind of rejuvenate on its own, and it's not. Listen, we are losing third gear. I said it. I just, I said it, all right? I'm not sure if it's the input shaft, it's not forkish, I'll tell you that. The gear doesn't sound like it's gearing. It doesn't slip out, it bangs out. I wrapped my backpack around it and leaned on that and was hanging on like, like this. And it would still come out of gear. So, I think we still have 900 miles. And there's a chance that we're only going to have second gear for... 899 miles That's pretty good Okay, here's the plan don't have one. Here's also the plan Cold start really quick Oh, yeah We're gonna check the oil by watching the oil pressure gauge Yep So we're gonna go back roads in case we do get stuck with second gear so we're gonna go southeast cut across Kansas down to the corner and then we'll cut through the bottom of Missouri and then 
then uh, I think that we cut right into Tennessee, can't we? I don't know. Let's just let's hit the road. It's got jalapenos. Pretty good breakfast. Well, that doesn't look normal. Oh, okay. Well, anyway. going on with either the lower hose or what the hose connects to but we're gonna pretend we didn't see that for now because my pizza's getting cold. Let's hit the road. side of the road. Well, actually, I pulled off the road, but these fall colors are really nice going down the highway and stuff. Uh, can't keep it in third. And then I pulled over and tried to roll the pattern and the shifter is completely locked up. So we've got none gears. I'm hoping it's just the linkage is bound up or something. But anyway, it's uh, 35 degrees out, I think. Windy. I'm gonna throw the jacket on here. Go get the uh, jack out and the jack stand. Crawl underneath and see if we can figure out what's going on here. Ooh, turn the AC down. Well, here's the shifter. It's a Hurst. So when we pull the lever upstairs, over and back to third that's going to push this lever forward this one is pretty worn out that's reverse and first i just need high give me high gear so i'm going to take out this uh clampy pin doodabber lose that on the ground and then we're gonna put some more throw into this and see if we can throw it in the third harder I really don't think that's the issue, but it's worth a shot. Anyway, I got this unbound, I think, from it popping out a thousand times. I just had the shifter. Shifter was all bound up. Well, shifter's unstuck. Got the linkage adjusted. There is definitely something physically wrong with the transmission. If you grab these rods, you should be able to shift it with your arm. It'll be a little taunt, but it should click, click. This one does not want to go into the third gear is just falling apart, basically. So I got to start thinking of options here. I don't know how much farther we're going to make it. We'll jump in and try it. But uh, second gear, I think we're only going to be going 40 at 3,000 RPM. So that ain't gonna work with how many more miles we got left, that's for sure. Well, let's give her a shot. Oh boy. It doesn't sound good. Here we go. One, two. Question, is there a third gear home? Nope. That's what it was doing last time. It's gonna pop out here in a second. I'm forcing it in the third. If I let go of my hand, it'll pop right out. are usually so reliable. There it went. Slow down, look at the views a little 
bit more. That's pretty nice. Yeah, that's not a normal sound. Well, found some good old gravel. And, uh, I don't know, we'll cruise along like this until we can find somewhere to sit down, wet the back neck, and think something. Nice part of the country. We've got some rapid, unscheduled disassembly happening in the transmission. I don't know if it's trying to make a fourth gear or delete a couple, but it is. I'm just trying not to listen to it. We're headed towards a small town called Cherryvale, I think. Uh, it's the closest one I could find on gravel, and this is the best way to see the America anyway. Just cruising the back roads here. Uh, there's a restaurant there we could sit down and, I don't know, find someone to play some cards with or something. Well, good morning, fellers. Yeah, stayed another night. Really wanted to exhaust my options here, try to get this 50 Chevy home. Went on the interwebs deep. Could not find a three speed. Found a couple T5s. I think that'd be too much work for the parking lot here. Thought about putting, you know, a 350 in it, automatic, but then I couldn't find a driveline shop around here that could change up the driveline quick enough. So no luck on swapping a transmission. So I thought, well, I'll get an old pickup truck, just rent a dolly, pull the thing home. And I don't know why in this corner of this state, truck prices are through the roof and no one talks to you back. I couldn't strike a deal on a pick -em up truck. So I'm gonna concede and luck would have it. Right across the street is an auto transport and a U-Haul truck. And <laughs> to be quite honest, it's 700% cheaper than trying to buy a truck out here. So you win some, you lose some, guys. We've had an awful lot of good luck over the years. And truth be told, this ain't easy. And every time we do this, we're rolling the dice. We didn't win this time, but it could be worse. Look, we still got a beautiful 1950 Chevrolet. The engine runs great. Everything seems to work other than the go forward, go backwards machine. So I'm going to crawl this across the street throw this on a U-Haul transport and I got a boogie home, drive all the way through the night tonight and then I guess tomorrow morning technically, got to get myself to Georgia, pick up another car that rhymes with Mopar. Thanks guys for watching, appreciate y'all very, very much and hey, we'll see you soon.